conference, let me just begin by saying to every councillor, every member, every supporter, to every one of you who pounded the pavements during the general election, thank you. Because you did it. You delivered a Conservative majority of 80. You worked your hearts out. You redrew the political map of Britain. And you've given this country a stable and patriotic government. Led by this Prime Minister, united as one party, working together, we won a historic victory. And from the moment the ballots were counted, we knew the scale of the opportunity and the task that lay ahead. To deliver on the trust that the people of this country, many for the first time, have placed in us. And then coronavirus struck. It shook the world. It hit us hard, taking lives on a tragic scale. Every community scarred, every one of us affected. It nearly took the life of our Prime Minister, our friend as well as our leader. And you know, I get asked a lot how I felt when I was covering for him. Well, I really worried that we might lose him. And I worried for Carrie, pregnant with baby Wilf. But I always had the faith that with the outstanding NHS care he received and his fighting spirit, that he'd pull through. Above all, faced with the greatest challenge in a generation, I just hoped and prayed that we as a nation would be equal to it. And I have to say, for every hurdle we faced, with every heart-rending loss, there was also a tale of courage, a moment of inspiration. The hospice worker who told me how she and her team had comforted patients in their last moments when no one else could be there because of COVID. The sight of our armed forces at their brilliant best building Nightingale hospitals and delivering PPE to care homes. The community spirit I saw firsthand in Isha and Walton repeated across the country of volunteers stepping up to the plate to deliver food and medicines to the most vulnerable in our communities. I'll never forget the stoic smiles from weary residents, some had been isolated for months on end, who just refused to be cowed. Of course there'll be lessons to be learnt from this unprecedented global pandemic. But the greatest lesson lies in the challenges we can overcome, the scale of what we can achieve when we in this country all come together. And that's our mission as a Conservative government, as we build our economy back stronger and greener, as we level up opportunities for every child, no matter what their background, and as we reinforce all four nations of our precious union. And my friends, we'll only realise our full potential with a truly global vision for Britain. And it's only the Conservatives that believe Britain can and should still play that role in the world today. The rest of them don't. We're the ones. We delivered Brexit as promised, taking back control over our laws, our borders, our money. Yes, we want a free trade deal with our European partners, but any deal must be fair, and the days of being held over a barrel by Brussels are long gone. Under the Conservatives, there's no question our government will control our fisheries, our parliament will pass our laws, and our courts will judge them. And as masters of our own destiny, we'll forge new free trade deals, like the one we just signed with Japan. I've just got back from Vietnam and South Korea, where we're building Global Britain as a buccaneering free trading nation with our growing focus in the Indo-Pacific, expanding British trade into artificial intelligence, tech and data, so that we can create the well-paid jobs of the future and cut the cost of living here at home. And one of the lessons that we Conservatives take from coronavirus is that when we come together, we can be even bigger than the sum of our parts, an even stronger force for good in the world. That's why we brought together our diplomatic muscle with our financial clout, by merging the Foreign Office and DFID into a new Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Because we have greater impact when all areas of British foreign policy are properly joined up. That's what we found fighting coronavirus. We used our aid budget to fund British scientists to pursue a vaccine. We hosted the Global Vaccine Summit and we smashed the target for funding by over £6 billion. That's the way we can protect the British people, which is always our first priority. But it's also the way that we can shield the most vulnerable people in the poorest countries who lie at the mercy of a second global wave that would threaten us all. Now tell me, conference, why is it some people find it so hard to take pride in this great country of ours? Why do the positive things we achieve get so little airtime? Ipsos Mori recently surveyed young people globally to see what they thought of countries around the world. Now you'd think from some of the debate we have here at home that Britain was rock bottom, 
My friends, we came top. Young people around the world say the UK is the most attractive country. Our institutions, the most trusted. Oh, and by the way, we ranked third back in 2016 before the referendum. So around the world, young people, they're not deterred by the renewed pride we take in Britain. And no, they're not offended when we sing Land of Hope and Glory. No, they've been inspired by our decision to stand tall so we can realise our full potential as an independent nation. So as Conservatives, we've got a responsibility, I'd say a solemn duty to our children, not to shrink into the shadows, but to look to the stars. We're a science superpower leading that search for a COVID vaccine at a moment in history when more than ever, the world needs that kind of ambition. We're standing up for our values steeped in historic commitment by offering the people of Hong Kong, threatened by China's draconian new security law, the right to build a better life here in this country and a pathway to British citizenship. And as Conservatives, we're proud to do it. It was this Prime Minister who had the moral courage to enact Magnitsky sanctions, the first ever human rights sanction regime in this country, which we're using to target those running the gulags in North Korea, those persecuting the Rohingya in Myanmar, Alexander Lukashenko and his henchmen in Belarus, brutally attacking peaceful protesters, and the Kremlin cronies who directed the torture and murder of Sergei Magnitsky himself. When I first met Sergei's wife, Natalia, I promised her that I would campaign for justice for the crimes against her husband. And I'm proud that it was this government that delivered. And it will be this Prime Minister bringing the world together next year in Glasgow when we host the global climate change talks so that as we recover from COVID, we bounce back stronger and we bounce back greener. That's Conservative leadership and that's Global Britain. And what about the Labour Party today? They can't be trusted to make Global Britain a reality. After all, it was only last year that Keir Starmer was asking this country to make Prime Minister a man who wants to cosy up to Britain's enemies. Jeremy Corbyn may have gone, but the instincts that led Labour to elect him haven't. And the people of this country know the truth. When it comes down to it, it's the Conservatives that stand up for Britain and Labour won't. Conference, we faced relentless challenges. Hung parliaments, two general elections in three years, the scars of the Brexit debate, and now a cruel pandemic, the likes of which we've never seen before. But adversity has never daunted us. So let the flame of inspiration from the nurses, the care workers, the soldiers, the volunteers who rallied to face down this deadly virus, let their lodestar guide our way. Let's fire up our confidence as a party. Let's rediscover our self-belief as a country. Because there's a summit within our reach. The 2019 election gave us the greatest opportunity we've had in 30 years. And now we've got to grasp it. So let's deliver that tech innovation. Let's level up opportunities for every child. Let's reinforce the bonds of our four great nations. And let's re-establish our rightful place in today's world as a truly global Britain. We can do it and we will do it. Thank you.